Okay, God bless you all. My name is Brother Jonathan Kale. I'm making a video based upon the Mark of the Beast. The date today is 6-6-2016. Very significant number. Uh, I was pretty much like, you know, taken back by the Lord by how he set it up um, and gave me this dream uh, regarding the Mark of the Beast um, on this specific date. <coughs> to me, that was very interesting. You know I mean, and I mean, God is just very wise. And, uh, <coughs> mm. <sighs> allergies, y'all. I apologize. My allergies make my eye real lazy, man. But um, anyway, um, so. What are we going to do, right? We're going to go straight to it, okay? All right. Uh, I had a dream. I had to feed people a literal word and pan it up in aluminum pans, just like I do at my job, to feed it to the people. And it was very disturbing, and everybody had to be approached with this dilemma. Everybody had to make a decision. The food were literal words. I'm gonna stop right there. I apologize about this. Okay, the food was literal words. With that being said, that the food was literal words is because um it was like it was food, but you could eat it. And the words were like, you know, in sentences. You know what I mean? They were like in sentences. And like, it was like, like a whole sentence. It was, even, it was even like words that weren't, you know, touching each other. Because the sentence, you know, if it says the, and then it says another word, it's not gonna touch. Well, in spite of the fact that it didn't touch, you can move it around like like this. Like you can move it around. I mean, like, so I could just carry the word around like this. I could just carry that word around like that or like this. And the whole word would be moving around. And so I was just putting words inside of these aluminum pans. And these words uh, were, were white. And um, anyway, um, these were white words. Like usually, you know, you see words written in black, but these words were written in white. And um, so I was putting them in aluminum pants. And, and mind you, like one word is one serving, okay? So one word is one serving. So like, you know, like sometimes like for chicken, like when we bake chicken at my job, you could probably fit up to like sometimes 50 pieces or you know 45 pieces or 30 pieces even depending on how big you know and how you like make it fit in like Tetris well the way I had to put this food in it, these words which were food the way I had to put that in there uh, was like you know I just started storing it in there but it was more than one serving so it wasn't just like one sentence okay well this is what the word said okay first of all I want to say this is that Jesus is the bread of life okay and Jesus is the word okay and the word became flesh and dwelt among men okay in the beginning was the word the word was God the word was with God he was, a, he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him without him nothing was made that was made you know okay so Jesus is the word and so whenever we think about the word we always have to connect that to Jesus. We always have to connect that um, to to something that you can eat. Okay, man should not live off of bread alone, and it's compared to the word. Okay, but by but by every word that proceeds out of the man mouth of God, um, Jesus said um, that doing the will of the Father is his meat. Um, you know that's like that's what he you know 
eats and I mean he was born in Bethlehem that means the bread that means um, house of bread or house of ham um, so yeah um, Bethlehem uh, yeah so um okay so so we always want to connect the word of God with eating, you know what I mean? Um, so, this right here was, uh, so food, this food was literal words. These words said, the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay? That's what I heard. Okay? That's what I saw. Not just heard, but that's what I saw. I saw, okay, so when I say to you that I was putting the food in the aluminum pan, like, you know, like the aluminum pans, like the aluminum pans that you uh, have with sternos underneath at cookouts and stuff like that, you know, with, with macaroni and cheese and, and, and chicken and potato salad, well, these were those kind of aluminum pans that you use to move around in. You know, the literal words that were in there said, The hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. This um this scripture is found in Revelation three ten. Okay. You go to Revelation three ten. This is the word that God has given them uh, to the church of uh, Philadelphia. Nonetheless, okay, that word was for Philadelphia, but this word is not for Philadelphia, okay? This word God spoke to me, and this word was for the world, okay? That's why how you read it, um, it was spoken as if it was for the world. See, the beginning part says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee, I will also keep thee free from the hour of temptation. Okay. Now, that's not what the Lord said to me in the dream when I was panning that up and putting it in the food. The Lord, okay, so we have to understand that this is still the word of God and this is still the Bible where I got it from, but the Lord gave it to me in my dream as if this had nothing to do with the Church of Philadelphia. He gave it to me like, okay, this is what's coming upon, and he said it just like this, this is what's coming upon the nations. This is what's coming upon the tribes, the nations, and the whole entire world. This is what's coming here to this earth. And he didn't say it like it had anything to do with Philadelphia. So please, have nothing to do with Philadelphia in this discussion because this is a warning word. Philadelphia wasn't warned. They were actually congratulated. Okay. This is a warning word. This is a prophetic word and it's a warning. Okay. And Jesus, when he gave me that word to put it in the pans to feed the people, this is what I'm doing now. I'm feeding the people. Okay. And so it's because you can eat it. Okay. Um, because um, Man shall not live off bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Uh, and this is still food, and it's still a comparison to food, because Jesus is the bread of life. Um, when we eat of him, we partake of him. He said, you know, he said, um, taste and see that I am good. Okay? So, um, so where it picks up at, it says, the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This is the presentation, okay? 6-6-2016. Six, six, this, this is the prophetic word that the Lord is letting us know, which is coming to the world, okay? And it's coming in a mighty way, and this dream was a very, very mighty dream. And the Lord, um, he said, that's what he said, the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the, the earth. 
Okay. Now from there, after after he said that, um, then the voice of the Lord said to me, "This temptation is the mark of the beast." Okay. That's what the Lord said to me directly after uh, I was like, you know, looking at the food that I was panning up. And of course, this food, as I told you all, is uh, the word that I just read, the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Okay. Well, immediately after the Lord said, this temptation is the mark of the beast. That is the temptation. And that's um, a scripture that I'm going to read from Revelation 13, 15 through 18. Okay. This is the temptation. Okay. Starting at 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, he meaning um, the false prophet, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six or six hundred and sixty six that is the temptation, okay? Because that would is that's what everybody's going to be faced with, okay? Whether they're going to take it or whether they're not going to take it, this is decisions we will all be faced with, either getting the mark of the beast. This is what the Lord told me: either getting the mark of the beast and following the beast, or refuting the beast, the mark of the beast and standing and losing your life because of it. The same trial is recorded in verse 12 of Revelation 4, 12. For, of Revelation 14, 12. And it says, um, okay, but this trial is a difference, okay? It says, but the Lord said, this only applies to you according to your decision if your decision is to live for Jesus, okay, so, so, so this only applies to you, what I'm about to read now, if you are living for Jesus, okay, and, um, he said, here is the patience of the saints, that's what I heard the Lord say, okay, so, that word is only if you're a saint, okay, a saint is a set apart one, okay, just like the word uh, sanctified, okay, um, or holy, okay. So it says, um, here is the patience of the saints. This is what the Lord told me that is a separate word from what I just gave you all regarding um, the temptation, the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth, okay. Um, that's just an overall gen general word which we'll have to face and sinners alike will have to face but a, 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 a separate word that is only for us bodies of believers who are faithful Christians um, this word is here is the patience of the saints and then the Lord told me he told me in this dream he said count it out and, no, and the number of all the words equal to seven as I counted it. I started to count the, um, the word out. Uh, I started to count out the words. And as I counted out the words, the numbers equal seven. Okay. Here is the patience of the saints. Okay. Here is the patience of the saints okay 
And the Lord is very wise. He's very, very wise. He told me, he said, count, count out that word that I gave the saints. Count it. And so I counted it. And that's when I came up with that number. And um, because, because uh, even though the verse says more, he only said the first seven words. That's all he said. Now, I could read to you the rest of what it says, but he only said that first seven. Okay, I already said it. Here is the patience of the saints. And then afterwards it says, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Okay, now that's a given. But the first thing he said was, here is the patience of the saints. Because one thing about temptation, I thank you, Jesus. One thing about temptation is that it's hard to uh, be patient um, when you're tempted by something that you want. Okay, and so we're going to want food. We're going to want water. We're going to want something to drink. We're going to want uh, freedom and clothing and, you know, just so many things that people will, uh, the people who are desiring to save their life and, um, and, and lose it, those are the same things that they'll be tempted with and they won't be patient and they'll be anxious. And the Bible says be anxious for nothing. And they're going to be anxious because the devil is going to be um, embodying the Antichrist, the beast, and he's going to bring forth this proposition. You know what I mean? Like you take this mark of the beast, you take the, uh, the number of his name, or you take uh, the, um, the mark of the beast, the number of the beast, okay, and the number of his name. You take these three things, and you know, he'll 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 uh, put you in a position where you'll be um, um, damned for the rest of your life, okay. Uh, but at the same time, even though you'll be damned and will not be able to inherit the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, you'll still be able to um, you know eat food. You'll still be able to, you know, um, live life uh, the way that it once was lived, and and you can, and you'll even be able to, you know, like try to, you know, um, just keep that 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 life rolling. Because that's why the Bible says um, that they did not like that they did not love their life unto the death. Okay, because um, that's what God is calling us faithful Christians to be. And I say faithful Christians because you don't hear me say fake Christians too much. You have fake Christians, don't get me wrong, but I think we do a disservice to God a lot of times, not knowing, but a lot of times when we say that somebody's a fake Christian, okay? Because that doesn't mean, uh, uh, just because somebody's not living for the Lord, that doesn't make them a fake Christian, okay? Because you have wicked servants, the Bible talks about wicked servants, the Bible talks about um, the foolish virgins, okay? He didn't say foolish fornicators, he said foolish virgins, he said, he said, ten wise virgins, okay? Okay, he said five wise, ten, the ten virgins. Five was wise, ten, uh, the other five was foolish. He didn't say five was uh, wise virgins and, and, and the other five were uh, foolish fornicators. No, he said foolish virgins. Virgin always represents purity, okay? Jesus said, be pure as your Father in heaven is pure, okay? So... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so we need to know that because it's all about being faithful. He said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Well done, good and faithful servant. Okay, he's looking for the faithful. You also have the wicked servants. Okay, okay, you're still a servant. Okay, you have different, um, thank you, Holy Father. You have different uh, seeds. Excuse me, you have the same seed, but you have different soil, okay, that has been, um, that has been uh, plant. Yes, different. You have seeds that has been planted in different soil. Okay, okay. Some has been on um, good soil, which is the best. Okay, but then some has been on bad. Okay, stony rock. Okay, you know, shallow with thorns. You know what I mean? All right. So, moving on. Um. So. So I had to read the number of the words he, um, which he told me, which was, uh, here's the patience of the saints. I counted it up, 
it equaled up to the number seven. And um, from there, uh, the Lord um, told me to go get this book. Now, now, now I'm kind of skipping because I'm gonna go back to my dream, but I woke up to get this book, okay? Now, I was still sleeping, but I'm just, I still had the rest of my dream, but I'm not finished with the dream because the way I wrote it, I'm starting to now explain what happened when I woke up. So, um, so anyway, the number of all the words equaled seven because even though, okay, I already said that part, so the importance of the number seven and the Lord told me, um, the, so the Lord was focusing on the, on the importance of the first part, which I read, here's the patience of the saints. And the Lord told me to go open up um, my prophetic handbook, okay, um, that I bought, and, uh, and, and that I never really opened possibly too much. As soon as I opened it, it fell on a section called the importance of the number seven, okay? Wow, the importance of the number seven. As soon as I opened it, as soon as I uh, got up from laying before the Lord, Um, and opened up this book it said the importance of the number seven okay and the Lord told me to okay, okay. and so and so the importance of the number seven the writer explains God's seven spheres of creation that God established on earth okay God, um, God's seven spheres of creation that God established on earth. Okay, now these are seven spheres that God, seven, seven, God's seven spheres of creation that God established on the earth. One, worship and ritual. Okay. Two, family and community. Three, business and commerce. Four, mammon, money, and economy. Five, government and administration. Six, military and warfare. Seven, education and communication. Okay, I don't care if you're homeless. There's no way that you can um, get around any of these things. I don't care. You cannot. You cannot get around communication. We will be communicating in this realm and in the other realm. Okay, in this age and the age to come. You cannot get around communication. No matter where one goes on the planet or in what society one sojourns, one will be faced with these seven spheres in human life. The Lord wanted me to get this information because he is saying that everything shall be shaken. Shaken in the sense of every area in our lives are going to be tried. Our very makeup, our very identity will be tried. Okay? And um, so everything's going to be tried. Worship and ritual? Okay, who do you worship? Okay? Um, Jesus or the beast? Okay, because people are going to have to bow to the image, okay, you know what I mean, um, everything's going to be tried, family and community, okay, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, okay, mother, daughter, mother against, uh, mother against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother, all that, okay, so it's going down, okay, in community, okay, people are going to be turning on you, um, many will be offended and hate one another, um, you know, okay, business and commerce, okay, I gave you a word about commerce the other day. Oh, not the other day, but uh, earlier this year, the Lord told me um, about commerce um, and then business. All these things are going to be ending, okay? Um, whose business are you going to be about? The Father. Jesus said, I'm about my Father's business, okay? <clears throat> so, that, like, like, we're going to all be put to the test, okay? Uh, man, any, uh, money, and economy, okay? Um, I mean, clearly, uh, that's going to be the way you purchase things, okay, uh, through the mark of the beast, okay. Um, government and administration, okay, we already know whose government it is now and whose government it will be, okay. 
um, meaning the devil, okay? Um, and it's going to be uh, God's government in the millennium reign. It says, um, for those who endure, they will be able to see that. And it says, um, you know, and the government shall sit upon his shoulders in Isaiah 9, 6, speaking of Jesus. Military and warfare, okay? Um, the army of the Lord spoken of in Joel, okay? Also, you know, Satan is going to have um, his army as well, all right? And we, um, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, okay? So it's always going to be warfare, okay? Um, put on the armor of God, you understand? Uh, number seven, education and communication, okay? Okay, well, right now, the education system is already uh, very demonic. Um, and, you know, never think that they will not try to encourage um, us to learn about the beast, to glorify the beast, as well as our children to um, do the same things, okay? And, and to learn and to have education. Um, the Bible says that in the latter days, uh, there will be doctrine of devils, okay? So doctrine means teaching, and this is education and communication is, uh, um, remember I told you about the sound waves you're gonna hear, also um, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost that she, had, that she cannot receive in the name of Jesus, okay? Um, I mean, doctrine of devils is gonna be uh, communication through that, you know what I mean? Like, it's gonna be a lot going on, man. Okay, so and as, as far as communication, um, it's gonna all be shaken. Um, you cannot communicate the gospel, you'll be killed. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, the list goes on. Everything's gonna be shaken, okay? That's why I say all this to let you know. That's why the Lord told me to go get that book and to read this, and he wanted me to let you all know that everything is gonna be shaken. That's why he said, here is the patience of the saints, because everything's gonna be shaken, okay? Worship and ritual, family and community, business and commerce, mam and money and economy, government and administration, uh, military warfare, education and communication. It's all gonna be shaken. That's seven, okay? Worship and ritual is one. Family and community is two. Business and commerce is three. Mammon, money, and economy, that's four. Uh, government and administration, that's five. Uh, military and warfare, that's six. Education and communication, that's seven. Okay, right now, uh, the Obama administration is very hostile towards Christians, okay? Um, no matter where one goes on the planet, I mean, even at the administration of my job, uh, they want you to scan your hands, okay? People who do the administrative work, you know, they, they, I mean, people are gonna be scanning their hands. Like, that's, that's administration work right now. They're, they're doing that in my job, HR. I mean, I mean, not the current HR, but you know, the ones before, the ones now, you know, they had us, uh, well, not me, I, I clock in, but they had everybody else scanning their hands. But I don't knock anybody who scans their hand. Just make sure you don't get the mark of the beast. Today is 6-6-2016. Six, six, Do not get the mark of the beast. And it's coming. Okay. So, no matter where one goes on the planet or in what society one sojourns, one will be faced with these seven spheres in human life. The Lord wanted me to get this information because he is saying that everything shall be shaken. Shaken in the sense of every area in our lives are going to be tried our very makeup, our very identity will be tried. Uh, many say the mark of the beast will tamper with your identity as well. And I want to read that in um, Revelation 9, 1 through 6. Thank God for my sister, Jen, who um, threw that out there. Revelation 9, uh, 1 through 6. Because, yes, people will try to seek death and will not be able to find it. Uh, Revelation 9, 1 through 6. And it reads... And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke of the pit at the smoke of a uh, great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. 
which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Okay. Um, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and, sh and death shall flee from them. Okay, that is definitely dealing with your uh, identity, you understand? And um, these are the people who have received the mark of the beast, who are going to suffer, okay? The children of God will not be, um, will not suffer behind this, okay? Now, all right, uh, Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Okay, so be a martyr disciple. Be a, be a disciple martyr. Okay. We must not love our lives so much that we cannot consider the, this temptation that goes throughout the whole world in Revelations 3.10, which it speaks about. In the dream, almost in the entire dream, I was near a disturbed man. Okay, I was near a very disturbed man. He was very disturbed, and and he was feeling the weight of the decisions. Um, very indecisive. He was very indecisive, and he was feeling the weight and the pressure. And I was among a coworker later on, who already acts funny towards me. And I gave her the word I am telling you all now. And she sucked her teeth. She sucked her teeth at me. Like she didn't want to hear it. Um, she doesn't approve of me in real life. And she appears very bitter towards me in real life. This is why God showed her to me in the dream. I tried to explain to her the temptation that is coming upon the whole earth. And she said, what? Like, like, I, was, like I said it. Like, you know, like she was just pissed off. Like, what do you want as if I was irritating her or being a pest? And in real life, I hardly talk to her because I've dis I've discerned how fake she is. But, but, but it's not really about her more than it's about those who fit the criteria of the world. That, that those people who are stubborn, they, um, you know, um, kind of reminds me kind of like of, um, they're just, they're just very bitter. They hate the word of God. You know what I mean? Um, um, they do not have peace with God. But, um, but you know, it is what it is. So anyway, um, uh, back to the number seven. Okay. Seven is the number of divine rev revolutions and cycles. The number of creator dominance that, that symbolizes world impact and control. The number of kingship and lordship and absoluteness. The number of potentate. This word potentate is in uh, 1 Timothy 6.15. Okay. People trade this word with the word sovereign, which is not found in scripture because it is not a exact word. It's not, it, it, it has no exactness to it. The word sovereign pretty much uh, is a word that also um, uh, explains how God will um, go outside of his word, okay, and go outside of boundaries, okay? This is a demonic word to me. I don't like the word sovereign. I'd rather use the word potentate. Now, sovereign is not a bad word when it's associated with kingship or lordship or emperor, but that's not the only uh, representation of what that word means, and usually it's associated when Christians want to, you know, make light of sin and like, I, I hear people say, you know, uh, when they're when they're out of the will of God, they say stuff like, well, you know, God is sovereign. Like, I mean, God's sovereign. Like, God, you know, I mean, like, nobody knows the will of God. Nobody knows what God can do. And so what that does is that take kind of takes away from somebody like me who's a teacher and a preacher and I can't say anything because God's sovereign. So it's like I can't even preach the word of God and say repent. Because you're like God's sovereign, like God's sovereign, like He can change anybody. 
they were saying uh, he can do anything. He can he can do anything. He can he can that person Prince could have went to heaven. You know uh, Muhammad Ali he could have went to heaven anyway. Who are you? God sovereign. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he died a Muslim, but God is love and he's sovereign. They use that a lot. I mean, you hear it a lot of times. That word is so is associated with Christians who uh, want to do what they want to do. Okay, they already have a set agenda. Okay, and like I told, you, I told you guys, I just lost my brother in Christ to um, adultery. Okay, um, he was stressing the sovereignty of God. Okay, he was stressing that, and in him stressing it, he was stressing it because he knew that he was not supposed to get married, and he got married anyway. And um, you know, and he used the God is sovereign thing as as his excuse, even though he just got divorced from his second wife, and he married his third wife for the same reasons why he divorced his second wife. <laughs> you know, I mean, so it's just crazy. Like, you know, I mean, and his and his first wife is still alive. And then you say God is sovereign. Okay? So you marry your first wife. Excuse me. You marry your first wife. Then you divorce her because you want to get a new wife. You know what I mean, you just have that desire. Um, and so you divorce her. You could have, both of you guys cheated. So you been could have got a divorce, but you didn't until you found this new woman. And you got a new wife. Then, um, you know, you divorce her to get this, to get with this new chick. And after that, you divorce her because, you know, you find out that that's sin. Then after that, you get married again, and, and everybody's still alive. And when, when I say everybody, it only matters about the first one. So the first person is still alive. Okay, that's when you hear God sovereign. Okay, that's when I started to hear God sovereign. And I even looked it up in the Bible. I'm like, where is it at? It's not in there. Okay, now the word potentate. Okay, it deals with God's lordship, and God, he 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 will not uh, assume his uh, his his name above his word. He esteems his word above his name. Okay. So yes, he is Lord. Jehovah is Lord. That's his name. But he's not going to esteem his word above his name. Okay. So that whole thing it says that he'll go outside of his boundaries. Okay. That's that's what they say about uh the word sovereign. Like God could, and then my brother said he had a green pass. He had a green light. Okay. Some people say this about the whole Mark of the Beast thing. Like you know um you know, like they're hearing people like John MacArthur, they're hearing this one save all his save stuff. Many people like John MacArthur who's saying that you can get it. I had to rebuke um a false man of God. He's completely false. His name is Dr. David Anderson. This man is false. His name is Dr. David Anderson. He's in the uh tri state area of DC. He's a false man. Um he has his radio station, he's very charming, he's very nice, he's very calm. It's always those, it's always the people who are very nice, they speak politically correct, they're very calm, they're very peaceful, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. These are the same ones who are going to encourage you to get the mark of the beast. These are the same ones who are going to smile with you all the way to hell. They, yeah, God forgives. God is a forgiving God. And meanwhile, these people, they will watch you go to hell, you understand? They will watch you go to hell. And they, and they, and they, you know, and Listen, man. Hold on for a second. I'm gonna give y'all a scripture about the importance of the number seven too. Okay. Let's see. So the importance, also the importance of the number seven. Okay. The importance of the number seven. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Okay. Now, I'm gonna just give you scriptures of where to go um, in regards to the word uh, in regards to the number seven. Okay. Now, abominable sins. Proverbs six sixteen. And 2625. <laughs> 6, 16. All right. Compilation of cycle. Genesis 710. Covenants. Genesis 4625. Creation miracles. Second Kings 
4, 35, and 5, 10. Daily praise, Psalm 119, 164. Days before the flood, Genesis 7, 4. 7, 4. Days of the week, Genesis 2, 2. Deacons in First Church, Acts 13, 19. Demonic stronghold, Matthew 12, 45, Luke 8, 2. Divine decrees, Daniel 4, 16, 23, 25, 32, and 9, 25. Divine sacraments, Exodus 7, 25. Eyes of God, Zechariah 4, 10. Feast, Numbers 29, 12. Forgiveness, Matthew 20, Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Fullness of God's blessings. Job 1, 2 through 3, and 2, 13. God's lamp lights. Um, Numbers 8, 2. Zechariah 4, 2. Offerings. Genesis 21, 28. Ordained services to the Lord, the spirit world. Genesis 29, 27. Um, priestly consecration. Leviticus 4, 6, and 8.33 Priest Joshua 6.4 Prophecy Genesis 41.6 Prophetic Miracles Matthew 15.34 and 1 Kings 18.44 Purification Leviticus 12.2 Rededication Leviticus 23.34 Samson's Hair Judges 16.19 Seven Nations Deuteronomy 7.1 Acts 13 and 19. Seven Passover lambs. Okay. Seven Passover lambs. Referred to 12 times between Leviticus and Numbers. Shepherds under Christ's ministry. Micah 5 5. Solomon's temple completion. 1 Kings 6 38. Spiritual release. Deuteronomy 15 1. Stars, the Pleiades. Uh, uh, Amos 5 8. A uh, stone is Christ with eyes upon it. Zechariah 3 9. Tabernacle. Numbers 19 4. Time of completion, expiration. Leviticus 2 2. 12 2. Trumpets. Joshua 6 6. And you guys know that dream that the Lord gave me, if y'all know about it, um, where the Lord told me on the Feast of Trumpets. On the last trumpet, the Feast of Trumpets, we shall resurrect. And that last trumpet is seven. There's only seven trumpets. And that Lord, the Lord told me that audibly. I heard him audibly without, you know, the Lord said that to me when I was waking up out of my sleep. And I heard his audible voice. Okay, seven. And that ain't even Joshua 6.6. 6. I'm talking about something else. Okay, uh, From the book of Revelation, okay. Seven, seven angels, seven plagues, seven candlesticks, seven seals, seven churches, seven spirits, seven heads, seven thunders, seven horns, seven thunders of creation, uh, seven mountains, seven trumpets, seven vials. Praise God. Seven. But today is the number of six. And so we're going to let you guys know that... Um, you know, this is what it is, okay, so, um, so yeah, but the number seven is a very significant number, okay, and, um, and the Lord was explaining to me about he, uh, here is the patience of the saints, okay, so we must, um, pray for patience, okay, um, we must be very patient, people say don't pray for patience, the Bible doesn't say that, uh, my sister had a scripture, about praying for patience, I can't think of it. Let me see if I can find it out right now. Um, um, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Uh, it says, wait patiently for the Lord. Okay. Uh, 
That's not a good one. Anyway, it's okay to pray for patience, okay? Patience is the fruit of the spirit that's long suffering. Okay. Anyway, I'm just gonna move on. I don't wanna take up you guys' time too much. This is uh well, this is very serious, uh Okay. So in the dream okay, so like I told you, I saw the guy who was very indecisive. Okay, he was very uh uh, nervous, uh, not knowing which decision he was going to make, if he was going to make a decision to uh, take the mark of the beast or not. And also, let me emphasize this. Um, this man did not have a particular race that he looked like. I couldn't tell if he was black, like a light-skinned black man, or like a white man, or like he was Hispanic. You know, I mean, I just really couldn't, I, uh, Filipino, like, I mean, phew, I couldn't, I couldn't tell, okay, I couldn't tell. And the reason why the Lord put it on my heart that I couldn't tell what race this man was is because this just represents man, that this is coming upon mankind, okay? I just wanted to throw that out there because God is very detailed. Um, so, uh... So yeah, so so when the saints align themselves with Revelation fourteen twelve, it is because they have been tempted with Revelation fourteen nine through eleven. Okay, so fourteen twelve is uh, fourteen twelve is here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the cover the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, okay? But it's because they refuted and they came against 9 through 11, which says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Okay? People need to know this because John MacArthur will not tell you this. Okay? Which is poured out without mixture. Oh yeah, so listen, let me say this, listen. So when I rebuked the dude, Dr. David Anderson, right? When I rebuked the dude, Dr. David Anderson on the radio, you know what I'm saying? Because I have called him there a few times and had to put some things in place, okay? Um, when I rebuked the dude, Dr. David Anderson, he was saying, I, I did it because he said that you can get the mark of the beast and God will forgive you. Never say that, okay? Never say that. Let me show you why. Um, scripture says, uh, Scripture says in Revelation 22, 19, to not add, take away from this book. And it's a warning, okay? So we know that John MacArthur is not going to heaven, okay? And I know that um, Dr. David Anderson also is not going to go to heaven because he's, he even he tried to take it back, but I don't heard him say that Christians could smoke weed and all that on the radio, so it don't even matter. So anyway, he said, uh, and if any man shall take away from the words, and he talks real professional, he's seminary, all that stuff is garbage, man. Seminary is supposed to be on your knees. Go to knees and airy. Knees and airy. Okay. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay. That's too much. I, 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 I'll just shut up. I'll just shut up, Lord, and say what you say, Lord. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to survive. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. The wine of the wrath okay, of God. <laughs> the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. <laughs> it's too much which is poured out without 
mixture without mixture into the cup of his indignation. I don't even understand. I don't. It's a lot. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. So the angels are going to be like this. Like they're just going to be posted like this. Watching fire and burn. Because you know angels and God, they, they're real calm. and They're just like this. They're just looking. They're going to be in the presence of the holy angels. And, 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 and keep in mind, fire and brimstone ain't nothing but meteorites. And stuff like that. And, and, and meteors and stuff like that. Okay? And they're just going to be like this. I, I, I think I made my point. <laughs> right. And in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name okay uh, so this is what you're to refute this is what you're to come against so you can have patience and you know and just be calm Jesus is Lord, you know, quiet, quietness and confidence shall come to your strength. Okay. When the saints align themselves with Revelation 14, 12, it is because they have been tempted with Revelation 14, 9 through 11, and denied themselves and picked up their cross and followed after Yeshua and did not practice. Okay. Uh, now, Let's not forget okay, the hour. Matthew 24, 6, 30, Matthew 24, 36. So let's go to that. Matthew 24, 36. Okay. But of that day and hour knoweth no man no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. It's that hour. It's that hour. Okay. Okay. So Bible talks about redeem the redeem the time because the days are evil. Okay. Hour, the word hour, whew, that feels good. The word hour uh means uh day, instant, season, short, even tide. High time and tem okay. And temptation means um, put into proof and to try. Okay. People are going to get the mark of the beast also behind self entitlement. They feel entitled to getting this and having this and having life go as usual. Okay, I want my same Maserati that I've been had. I want my same hors d'oeuvres on the weekend that I had been eating on the weekend. I don't want that to change. Okay. And when he comes as a false Christ, out of the abundance of anarchy in the time of chaotic uh, disarray and, and, and you know uh, uh, melees and mayhem, when he comes in the midst of all that, he's going to come as a false savior, and you're going to want those same things that you suffered uh, from not having. But you once had it, okay? You want to get it back, you understand? And so he's going to be the one to give it to you. But I want to encourage you today, don't take it. Okay. okay. All right, now, check it. Mark 14.37. Mark 14.37. Almost finished, y'all. Mark 14, 37-38. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watcheth one hour? Hour. Okay? Hour. We talked about this before, but I want to stress this because it says, Watch and pray, 
lest she enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. Okay? Okay? So, this is that hour. Okay? And, you know, we need to pray. Also, I want to make a video. I might make another video about how an hour is not long in prayer. Okay? An hour in prayer is not long. You just got to get used to it. If you're in the spirit, if you're praying in the spirit, and you're, and you're in unison with God, and you're in unity with the Lord, and you are, are one with the Father in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, it will happen so fast. You know what I'm saying? It will happen so fast. The spiritual realm, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you get sucked into it, when you go in tune, you be like, man, all that time passed. We used to worship in church, man. We used to worship in church all day and all night. Man, we be tired. We be so tired because we've been praising God and praying to Him for so long, speaking in tongues for so long, for hours. We would pray for hours, and we would be singing and, and, and playing keyboards and singing. You know, we just be worshiping God and praying, giving prophetic words, giving prophetic words, just being so in tune with the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? And then before you know it, you know what I'm saying? We like one in the morning. You know what I'm saying? This is a whole other kind of church I used to go to, man. It was, you don't got churches like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I've never been to a church like that ever in my life, okay? And they don't operate like that no more, but um, it was something, man. It was something. God was really moving. And I was seeing a lot in the spiritual realm. That's why I, 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 I already knew how to pray. But that's why I really started to like, you know what I'm saying? Like we was praying for hours, for hours, for hours, for hours, for hours. You get with somebody, if you get connected with somebody who knows how to pray for a long time, don't let go of that person, okay? Be very close to people who know how to pray a lot, okay? It's good to read your Bible. It's good to know what the Bible has to say. And, and you know, but you can hear from God also when you pray a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's good to be around people who know how to pray a lot, who know how to pray a lot. Who know how to pray a lot, who know how to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. You know what I'm saying? See, I come from the old school saints. I come from old school saints. My mother, my mother's an old school saint. She know how to pray. You know what I'm saying my mother could pray for a long time. She can. She could be in tune with the spirit. Because my mother come from that era in Brooklyn. She was in Brooklyn in Bed Stuy, and people was getting saved. And people was just praying. Drug dealers was getting saved, and heroin addicts was getting saved, and people was just getting saved. Back right in front of your face, like it wasn't nothing. Saying nowadays, you know what I'm saying? I don't think a lot of people really playing or praying like that. I think a lot of people making a lot of YouTube videos and you know to pray and like you know you don't want to do a lot of activities. It's not it's not cool to do a lot of activities. Thank you, Jesus. It's not cool to do a lot of activities. As it says, uh, Revelation uh, uh, in the book of Revelation, he says. Um, to return to your first love, okay? They were very, they were very active in their activities, but they weren't. See, returning to your first love is 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 going to Jesus. It's spending and, and don't sleep on prayer. I think the reason why a lot of Christians don't pray a lot is because I don't think that they, I don't think that they have a lot of expectancy. And I want the YouTube subscribers that are subscribed to this channel to have a, I want to bless you with expectancy in the name of Jesus. Expectancy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Expectancy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Expectancy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive expectancy uh, because you don't know what God is going to do. You don't know what God can do. So don't act like, you know, what you're praying is in vain. I never want you YouTubers that look at my videos to everything that your prayers are in vain. I want you to pray, 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 pray. Ask God for the Holy Spirit. Ask God for the Holy Spirit. Ask God for the Holy Spirit. Paul said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you first believed? Why did Paul say that? Because a Christian can have, a Christian can be without the Holy Spirit. Okay, believing and following and obeying Jesus is not the way you just get the Holy Spirit. You get the Holy Spirit by doing that, but it's because He gives it. He doesn't just give it because you're a Christian. And that's why a lot of people aren't hungry because they don't think that they need, they don't, they don't think that there's more to get. They thought that they got it all. <laughs> okay? And there's so much more. There's so much more prayer. There's so much more. It's just so much more. It's always going to be more. It's always going to be more. It's going to be more in heaven. 
Okay? When we go to heaven, it's going to be more. So stop, 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 stop. Stop believing the devil. He doesn't want you to think that you're spending your time wisely. Okay? When you pray, 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 pray. You know what I'm saying? Feel good about praying a lot. Man, I work 10 days straight, y'all. I'm jealous. Okay? I'm jealous. You understand? Man, I would spend all day praying and reading, just praying and reading, not doing anything. This is the way you get knowledge of God. This is the way you get deep revelation from God and, and, and you get deeper understanding and, and you start to, you know, you start to be, you know, uh, more in tune with how he is and all these things. It comes from a lot of uh, uh, thirsting and hungering after righteousness. It comes from... Uh, um, Studying to, you, to show yourself approved. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, that word study means diligence. Okay. Or is it that the word diligence means study? I think the word study means diligence. Yeah, study means diligence. It's a beautiful thing. So he's a rewarder of those who diligently. There you go. Seek him. Is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So you gotta seek him. You gotta seek him. Seek and ye shall find. God is a good God. He's a good God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. Where we at? Where we at now, y'all? I'm about to close shop. So listen, watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Okay? Temptation. Watch and pray as she entered into temptation. You understand? Watch and pray as she entered into temptation. Okay? Okay? So check it out, y'all. So check it out. Now, with that being said, with that being said, okay, uh, now, I'm going to hit you off with John 17, 15. John 17, 15. Okay. This is very important. Okay. John 17, 15. It says, I pray not that thou shouldest thou. Hold up. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Okay. It's just like the prayer when you pray in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, lead us out to temptation, okay? Because it's that hour of temptation, remember? Lead us out to temptation, okay? But deliver us from evil, okay? So he says, okay? I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, okay? So don't try to align yourself. Well, well I'm Philadelphia. No, he doesn't. Listen, he's not trying to take you out of the world, okay? But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil, okay? Do you think that the Church of Philadelphia was uh, away from evil? No. Excuse me. The, do you think that they was away from the evil of this world? No. They weren't away from the evil of this world. They was among the evil of this world. But they let their light so shine that you may see your good works, because people hate the word works, but they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Okay? Because we love works, okay? We love works. Faith without works is dead. So anyway, um so yeah, so uh praise God. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. You know what I'm saying? So give God thanks, give God praise, give God honor, and God. So Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God. We know well aware of the hour of temptation, Lord God. Uh, 6-6, 2016, Lord God. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your 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 your, your, um, your statutes, your laws, Lord God, your proclamation of the word, Lord God, your decrees. Lord God, we thank you for all of, 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 of the fullness of the Godhead. And Lord God, we ask in your son Jesus' name, Lord God, that you do a, 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 a quick work in many of the babes out there in Christ, that you do a quick work 
in those who draw nigh unto you and they're not saved, but they're drawing nigh and they're feeling uh, the radiance of your light, but they are not one with you, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, because you said uh, you are light and there's no darkness in you, Lord God. But we ask that you do a quick work, Lord God. And we ask that you uh, place it upon their heart, Lord God, to receive salvation, Lord God. We ask that you place it upon their heart to repent from their sins, Lord God. Ah, hallelujah, glory, God. Glory, glory. So, Lord God, we just bless your name and we love you. And we ask, Lord God, that you get the glory and the honor and the praise. And that many people do not take the mark of the beast, Lord God. Remind them in this word, Lord God, when the time comes, Lord God, let this word resonate in their heart. Let the book of Revelations 13 and chapter 14, and let it resonate in their heart, Lord God. Um, yes, Lord God. Revelation 4:12, 12, uh, 14, 12, Lord God. Here is the patience of the saints, Lord. We ask that you give us patience, the patience, Lord God. We ask that we become saints, Lord. Set apart for you, Lord God. Not set apart for the devil, but set apart for you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I gotta leave on this note. I gotta leave on this note. Okay. Matthew 24, 46 through 51. Matthew 24, 46 through 51. Okay. <sighs> Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, Okay. Now he's showing you that this can be this way or this can be that way. If, right? But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Now why is he evil servant? Because he's saying, my Lord shall delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, fellow servants, fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken, okay? That always represents fellowship, okay? Eating represents fellowship. The Lord of the servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that is not aware, that he is not aware, okay? So we wanna be aware, okay? He said, watch and pray, okay? And then he also said, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, what is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is a pretender, okay? A hypocrite is an actor, okay? So stop acting and act like you know. God bless you all. I love you all. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ saves, and he can keep you from the hour of temptation by the patience of your souls. Oh, you know what? This is another scripture that I meant, meant to find real quick, y'all. One more, and I'm going to leave y'all on this note. I'm going to leave y'all for real, for real on this note, okay? Um, um, okay. Uh... Okay, let's see, let's see. This ain't the one I was thinking about, but let me see what it looked like. Let me see what it looked like real quick, y'all. Okay, that says... And yeah, this is it. And your patience possesses your souls. Amen, glory to God, I thank God for that. Thank you, Jesus. Because that ain't even the one I was thinking of. Okay, so this is, uh, and this is Luke 21. This is talking about the end times as well. So, um, so let's read. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, yeah, I'm going to start with 16. It says, And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk, 
and friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Now that sounds like uh, one of the sphere, the seven spheres that God has brought. Okay, okay. It even says in fifteen, and I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And then it says, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. It says, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. My God, I thank God for the for the awesome uh, promises of Jesus. In your patience possesses your souls. Can't nobody do nothing to you if Jesus don't want it. <laughs> he said, not a hair off your head. <laughs> and I done seen it. I done seen God's goodness, man. And people, people act like they're gonna do a lot to you. And don't nothing get happen, but that don't mean ain't nothing gonna happen. So just be patient, y'all, because we are supposed to get our heads chopped off. So God bless y'all. I love you. My name is Brother Jonathan Kale, and I love you. Peace.